Hello and welcome to Women on Adventures Yoga. My name is Sarah and today we're going to be moving you through a series of postures that would be appropriate for before your hike or after your hike or any time at all. So we'll begin in a kneeling position. If you have a yoga block handy you may wish to have that beside you. Um, if you're not comfortable kneeling like this you could also sit on your seat. We'll start with just a few moments of grounding short opening meditation. Just get settled. Close your eyes if you'd like. And start to slow down your breathing. Inhale and exhale through your nose. Create a gentle constriction in the back of your throat for ujjayi pranayama. It's that nice, light, ocean-sounding breath. Try to match the length of your inhale with the length of your exhale. Or maybe make your exhale just a touch longer. One more cycle of breath. On your next inhale, reach your arms up and over your head. On your exhale, bring your right hand down. Reach your left arm up and over. Take a nice, light stretch through your side. Inhale back to the center. And exhale, left hand down, right arm reaches. Inhale back to center. Exhale, rotate. Take a little twist towards your right. Let your arms float. Inhale, get long through the sides. Exhale, take a little twist to your left. And then come to a tabletop position. Align your shoulders directly over your wrist and spread your fingers wide on your mat. Take the tops of your feet down for now and we'll start to move the spine. Inhale, lengthen forward, lift your heart up, tip your tailbone up. Exhale, draw the belly in, round up your upper back like a cat, and bring your chin towards your chest. Inhale, lengthen forward, cow pose. Keep the belly tight. You might feel a little stretch there. Exhale, round, tuck, and arch your back. Inhale, stretch forward and extend your spine. Exhale, flex. Come back to neutral. Step your right toes towards the back of your mat. And we're gonna work into just a little bit of ankle, wrist, and uh, calf stretching here. You might feel it in the feet as well. So just move your right heel back. And keep supported through the shoulders. So resist the temptation to slouch the chest down. Rather push into your mat, into the earth with your arms. Send the heel back and then press it forward. You might feel a little stretch in your wrists if you allow your shoulders to come beyond them. And then switch sides. Right knee down, left toes to the back of your mat. One more time, pressing heel back and forward. Now turn your fingers towards the outside edges of your mat and just rock side to side for the wrists a little bit here. Curl your toes underneath you. Try to keep your heels in line with your sitting bones and then sit back on your heels. You can keep your hands on your mat like this, but if you want a little deeper stretch, start to sit all the way up. And stretch your feet and your toes. If you want something to do with your arms and shoulders, eagle wrap your arms. Take right arm underneath the left. And wrap at least once. You might be able to also bring your palms together, but don't worry too much about that. Broaden through the shoulder blades. On an inhale, lift your elbows higher. Take your gaze upwards. Create a mild back bend. And on your exhale, bring your elbows in. Bring your chin towards your chest. One more inhale, lift. Exhale, little tuck. And then open your arms wide. Exhale, wrap your arms the other way. Inhale, lift. 
Exhale, tuck. Last one. The feet might be a little achy here, so we'll shift forward, come back to your tabletop. Take the tops of your feet down and gently tap them out. Sit back on your heels one more time so the tops of your feet are down now. We're going to stretch the front of your ankles. Fingertips by your sides. If you had yoga blocks, you could put them there too. And then lift the knees up. Stretching the front of the ankle. This one can be pretty intense, so be gentle with it. There's no need to push beyond your comfort zone here. I always want to try to find that line between too much and not enough in yoga. Step your right foot towards the front of your mat. Slide your left knee back a few inches so that your left thigh bone is more at a diagonal. And then curl your back toes under. Lift your left knee up. Try to keep your hips just like this without lifting or lowering the hips. Bend and straighten your left leg. Working into a hip flexor stretch little bit into the quadriceps and also still working on a little bit of ankle and foot mobility. Two more rounds. Steadying your breath long and slow. Turning on your parasympathetic nervous system for relaxation. And then bring your left knee down. Start to, start to stretch. <laughs> forward over your right leg. Pull your right toes back towards your face and then lengthen your heart forward. Try to keep your back pretty straight on this one. And make this right leg active. Press the right heel down and then imagine that you're trying to draw your right thigh bone back into your hips. Keep your hips level. And then right heel is going to come over here towards the left side of your mat. You can use your hand to lift it. Dial your right leg out to the side, externally rotating. Lean the heart forward. Take your hands over here towards the right side. And just rotate the chest a little to the right as you slightly pull your hips to the left. Activate your belly, lift it in and up. Might feel a nice release here on the outside of your right thigh. And then we'll come back to the center. Rebend your right knee, lift your left knee up, and then lift your hips up into the air. Like a really long pyramid pose, but we're going to keep this left heel up and then press it down. Your front heel uh, and foot can be grounded for now, and we're just working this back leg. Lift the heel up and lower it down. And then let your left heel rest down. It doesn't have to touch the ground. It can if you want it to. Pull your right toes towards your face. Keep your spine long. Blocks would be handy if the ground feels like it's a little too far away for you. Point and flex front foot. And then rebend your front knee. Left knee down, right knee steps back. We are back to that tabletop position. And let's take a downward dog from here. So curl your toes under, lift your hips up high. And just march the legs nice and slow, taking your dog for a short walk. Press the chest back towards your thighs. Lift your heels really high and then press them back down. Twice more. Knees down, back to tabletop. And then just sit back on the heels for a moment. Close your eyes. Reset yourself. Keeping your awareness inside your body. Coming back to the sound and the sensation of your breath. Relax shoulders away from ears. Back to tabletop position. And we will step the left toes forward, right knee slides back, a runner's lunge, hands on either side of your left foot, right knee will lift. Try to keep your hips in this spot right here and bend and straighten your right leg.
two more. And then lower your right knee down. Start to shift back with your hips. Pull your left leg straighter. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Activate flexion in the left foot and send your heart forward. And try to uh, minimize the dialogue that you might have um, about these poses and about how you feel or look in them. And just imagine that you had no words to describe these sensations. They're not good or bad. They're not tight. You're not inflexible or flexible. Just be in the sensation. Really feel the sensations and notice them without judging them. I think we get plenty of that. Um, off of our yoga mat. So let's be kind and just be a witness to the experience. You're going to move your left heel over towards the right side of your mat. Dial your toes out. External rotation from the whole thigh bone. Walk your hands over towards the left. Heart leads to the left as well and then forward so your spine stays long. You can send your hips a little more towards the right side of your mat for a little bit more sensation through your IT band area, the outer hip, on your left leg. Two more cycles of breath. And then bring your left leg back in, rebend your left knee, curl your back toes under, lift right knee up and raise the hips. Lift and lower your right heel. And then let your right heel settle. It doesn't have to touch. Pull the left toes up and send your heart towards your toes with your back nice and long. Pull your belly in and up away from your left thigh bone. Shoulder blades will work their way down towards your back pockets. Bend your left knee, plant your hands, and step back to a downward dog. You can continue to move around in your downward dog if you like that, but it's also okay to just find some nice stillness here. And then lift both heels really high. Start to walk your feet towards your hands. Ragdoll pose, bend your knees, lay your belly on your thighs, and then wrap your hands around your elbows. Let your head dangle. Don't let it be really heavy here. You can even nod it yes or no, softening away any tension or holding through the jaw. Perhaps you sway right and left, and let your spine just cascade over your thighs like a waterfall crown of your head extending gently towards your toes. As little effort as possible here. Stretch your fingers out in front of you, heel toe your feet out a bit more. Maybe as wide as your mat, maybe even wider than that. Start to bend your knees and sit your bottom down for yogi squats. So your yogi squat, depending on the mobility in your hips, might look something like this with your forearms on your thighs and your seat at about the height of your knees. If you have the space available, you can continue to sit down. Maybe working your heels towards the ground. If they don't touch, you could shim your heels with a rolled up towel or a blanket. And then try to make your spine a bit longer without forcing. You can use your arms to gently guide your thighs open. Heel toe your feet back in and just sit down on your bottom. Left leg will stay out in front. Scoop up the lower right leg and rock your leg right to left. Keep the external rotation of your right thigh and sweep your right leg all the way up and over your left. 
pull your right heel towards your outer left hip and then lay your thigh open so your right knee is over your left knee. Square up towards your toes, keep your back long and then lead your heart forward towards your toes. If you couldn't reach your feet here, you could use a little strap or a towel. Pull your toes back towards your nose and this is where it gets really interesting. So you're going to flex your foot Find as much length as you can first, fold forward, and then curl your chin in towards your chest. And hopefully you're feeling a nice deep stretching sensation through the whole rear seam of your left leg. I call this half shoelace pose, it's a yin stretch. I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with it. One more breath. And then sit up tall. Hold the outside edge of your right foot. This is more of a seated happy baby, half happy baby. Bend your right knee, draw it behind your right armpit, and then straighten your right leg out. Sit up tall. Try to keep the back long. Right leg stretches out. Scoop up your left leg. Bend your left knee. Rotate the thigh bone externally, side to side rocking, nice and easy. And then pull that left leg all the way over, crossing your right leg, right heel, nestles right beside your right hip or thigh. Lay your thigh open, flex your toes, inhale. Exhale, extend. Find as much length as you can, chest towards the toes. Keep your foot flexed and then curl your chin in towards your chest. Take the crown of your head towards your big toe. One more breath here. Rise back upright. Left hand to the outer left foot, stretch forward and then pull back. Stretch both legs out in front of you. Take a nice long inhale, reach your arms up. Keep all of the space in your spine, stretch forward over your legs. And just relax into this for about three breaths. sit back upright. I hope you made some space in your body through these postures and we'll see you on your mat again soon. Thank you.